Hey, hi everyone. This is Ranma here on your show eCoffee with Experts. Today we have Nate from 1031 Marketing. Welcome Nate to our show. Hey, thanks for having me. Look forward to being here today. Great. Nate, before we move forward and discuss digital marketing and uh, marketing and branding with you, I request you to introduce yourself and your agency to our audiences tonight before we move forward. Yeah, sure. Yeah. My name is Nate Ebel. I founded 1031 Marketing almost eight years ago. We are a branding and marketing agency. We work on everything from brand strategy to design all the way to digital marketing, ongoing marketing campaigns typical web development, SEO, pay-per-click. And then over time, we evolved in getting more into the branding space. That's something that we've moved into a lot more in the last year or two. But overall, we are more of a full-service branding and marketing agency based out of Bloomington, Indiana, here in the U.S. Superb, superb. Nate, since you, are, you have founded your own agency, can you please explain the process you go through while helping a company or any client of yours develop its brand foundation and what are the key elements involved in creating a strong brand foundation yeah sure so we the way we do it here is that we like to work we like to obviously work with the executive team or the founder of the company that we work with and uh -huh. we take them through we have a five kind of five phase process for our own brand strategy that we go through with them and for that brand foundation piece we really like to get to the core of why do they exist? Why do they exist beyond just making money? So obviously we all know that we start business, we need to make money, we're, we wanna make money. But beyond that, what's the why behind it? And so we get into the deeper questions of why do you exist? What are the values your brand is built on, your company is built on? How do you wanna be portrayed? How do you wanna position yourself in the market to separate yourself from the competition? So we have a series of exercises that we will go through with teams, executive leaders um, to pull that out. What we've found is that a lot of times they will, a lot of times companies will just jump right into the marketing piece and they'll maybe just feel like they're spinning on an endless hamster wheel, trying to figure out what's going to work. And they don't really have a whole lot of foundational strategy to why they're doing what they're doing. In that brand foundation piece, we really help to develop, okay, why do you exist? What's really the purpose of your business? getting clear on who exactly you serve, what exactly you provide to them, what's the messaging you want to communicate to them. And then we build upon that so that each phase of that brand strategy process, we're able to point back to the core of who they are, what they're built upon, and then how we can best communicate, communicate that to their target audience and really their ideal customers and clients. Absolutely. While as marketers, we sit down with visionaries, with founders, owners of the businesses, we ask these, all these questions about how, what, why. And at times it does happen a lot that even they would have not thought so much about their business yeah. before starting it out. Does this happen with yep. you? Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes we go through stuff with clients and I'm like, oh man, yeah, we need to, I forget that. And so it's a lot of I think especially the longer you've been in a business, like we went through this process recently with a client that's a, a regional bank that's been, that's existed for a hundred years oh. and they didn't even know what, they couldn't even remember really quite what their vision was or their mission or any of those foundational elements of who they are. Right. And so, yeah, I think it's easy to just get caught up in the day-to-day task-based work as a business owner that you forget the obvious, which is why should you be doing this or is what you're doing currently on the marketing side actually helping you move forward toward the business goals that you have set. And we definitely see that a lot where we'll have clients that might approach us and say, hey, can you manage our social media or can you do this for us? And then we will say, yeah, we can. That's a service we can do. Why do you want that done? Is that actually, does that even make sense for your business? Because we could just give them a quote and then start doing that. But at the end of the day, we want to be able to actually help their investment, have a positive ROI. We want to actually help see the business grow. And a lot of times they just don't know what they don't know. And that's what we found by helping to ask those good questions. They can then better see a clear picture of, okay, Yes, I might think automatically that I should be on social media, 
or that I should be doing advertising or print or whatever the marketing strategy might be. But without doing that kind of foundational brand work, you're not really going to know if that's even what you should be doing and if that's going to be the best use of your time and ultimately your marketing spend. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because this happens with us a lot, wherein we actually, when we sit on these discovery calls and sessions, the founders, they actually go back to their drawing board to understand why they started the business in the first place. Yeah. yeah? And then how do they want Absolutely. themselves to be seen online and to be presented and how they, do they want their a target audience or their consumer segment to look at them. So can completely yeah. do that. Yeah, talking about businesses and audiences, right? How do you help any business to target, identify their target audience and conduct market research for understanding, to get a better understanding of their customers' needs and preferences? Yeah, so we always like to start, if it's a business that's existed, they've been around, obviously, They've already got a current customer base that we can do research on or get to know better. But so if that's the case, it's an existing business. I use the example of this bank that's been around a hundred years. They've obviously got a long history of who their customer base is. And so we'll start there and find out, okay, out of your customers, who's your ideal customer. And so we like to create ideal customer persona, client persona, what's their age range? What are their demographics? What do they like to do? What are their buying habits? Where do they spend their time at? So we'll create some surveys to actually connect with their current customer base. And we'll specifically talk to the ones that, you know, who are the clients that you love and you want more of? And those are the ones that we'll spend a lot of time asking questions, getting to understand what do you like about this company? Why do you continue to do business yeah. with them? So we like to obviously hone in on who are your ideal personas. And then we will do direct kind of research and questionnaires and surveys with them. And then we will also do from, if there's then newer kind of markets that they might want to get into, or they want to try and find new customers, then we'll start to do our own research to look into, okay, what's generally the shopping habits? Where do this, where does this maybe boomer, baby boomer generation spend their time at? Do we need to target them on social media or do we need to send them a mailer? Do we need to run a pay-per-click ad? It, obviously, it depends depending on the stage of the business, where the client's at. Obviously, something like a startup is going to be more in the vein of still trying to identify who their ideal customer is if they're just starting to get their first ones. But yeah, ideally, we love to be able to find who are the clients that, that you love, that love you. How can we find out exactly what it is that makes them continue to do business with you? And then how can we find more of them? Yeah, absolutely. A very valid point there, Nate, wherein if you focused upon touching base with your existing customers, customer segment and understanding what they like about you, you know, why you try and explore that blue ocean all the time of untouched yeah. segment, we really miss out upon the fact that we should touch upon the existing customer base that we have and build on yep. that brand value versus yep. going and testing waters once again and seeing what our competition does. Very valid point, you know, where it's easier to build For on sure. the value which already kind of exists and people relate to your brand, those value system which you already have got. So that's totally. a very valid point there. And then yeah. creating a brand value or brand positioning in a segment, like you mentioned the use case of a bank, which is a very tough competitive segment in itself, right? Yeah. So can you walk us through the process of creating a brand roadmap for any new business or any new segment for that matter. And how do you ensure that the roadmap is aligned with the company's overall vision, mission goals, and objectives? Yeah. yeah. When we create a brand roadmap, that's a final guiding light kind of document that we'll put together as we conclude any of our brand strategy work. And it's an all-encompassing roadmap that is not just pointing toward what marketing activities need to be done. Yeah. But it's also touching on what needs to be done internally in the business. So it also will touch on things like, how do you do customer service? How do you communicate with clients? Right. How do you do HR? How do you, what's your employee culture like? And that's one of the biggest things that we try and get across and communicate to businesses wow. is that your brand encompasses more than just your marketing. It really is every experience that somebody has with you and your business is a representation of your brand, good or bad. So 
the more that you can be intentional um, about tying it back into, again, here's why we exist, why we started, why, mm. what we want to portray. Here's the values we want to communicate. We'll then go through each part of their business and look at operationally, how do you, how do you inject this kind of brand experience into that? And again, I mentioned on the customer service side, and then obviously it ties in then on the marketing piece when we've discovered here's what the business financial goals are. We always like to start 10 years out and then scale back into what does that look like three years out and one year out. So we have a good mixture of short-term and long-term. So we then tie that roadmap to, okay, here's the activities that we need to do for us on our agency side, on the marketing piece. And then for them as a client, things they need to work on, on the business, on their business side internally operationally employee related that's going to help drive that brand experience and we'll put together then timelines and really like priority maps for here's the priorities that we need to move into on the marketing side and then here's things that we've identified that can be really put together to help better create a customer client experience that's really gonna keep people around and with the bank as an example what are things that we can do as this bank to provide a better brand experience from the minute they walk into your local branch, from the time that they go on your website. And that's where we'll always go back to that roadmap to see, is everything we're doing staying true to this roadmap we identified? Um, and the more that we can stay clear to that roadmap, the more we're going to be on path to reach those business goals three years out, 10 years out. Absolutely. I really appreciate the way you're diving deep into the business and not just focusing on the hits on the website. So yeah. it's very critical. And then I speak with a lot of people in the digital marketing agencies world overall. And I see a lot of people actually focusing upon what exactly are your customers getting out of it, yeah. uh, which is like a post sales discussion rather than just yeah. hitting those clicks on the website and putting it on a presentation. Yeah. It just is just. Well yeah, just taking care of your piece of the work while yeah. the overall, brand, overall branding and the exercise of putting that value to the end consumer of yours, which ensures yeah. repeat consumption of your service or product. And yeah. overall, which kind of gives you that brand value plus positioning plus yeah. you know, revenue because it's repeat business. So yeah. people actually dive that much deep into their yeah. clients' businesses. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that we, I always like to use personally the examples of well-known brands such as Apple or Starbucks mm -hmm. and talking about how anyone that owns Apple is likely an Apple fanatic. They, they've they got extreme brand loyalty to that brand. And so there's an experience that Apple has created what type of packaging you're going to get, what type of design, what type of simplicity, ease of use, connectivity between their products. So people have really, they've put a lot of energy and investment and time and strategy into what they want that brand experience to be, which has led them to being one of the top most profitable companies in the world. And we like to look at that as well, that, Hey, every piece, everything that you do matters uh, to your brand experience. And that I always say that in the end, brand wins every time. Like you, you touched on it, that you can run a campaign, get a lot of website visits. You can get some conversions, but if you're not creating the experience, that's going to keep them there long-term, then there's nothing to say. They won't just then leave to the next competitor. Who's going to give them a lower price or anything else. So we want to always look at more holistically. What can you do as an overall company and brand to not just bring those customers in the door? but then to provide the experience that's going to keep them around long-term. And obviously you're going to be more, you're going to be more likely to kind of leverage the long-term customers you've had that already enjoy your services to bring more of those in than trying to just find a bunch of new ones, keeping retaining those clients and providing that great experience is a big deal. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it kinds of improves your brand positioning against your competition because yeah. Like they say, nothing is perfect, right? Every brand, even Apple or any other top brands, right? There comes a time wherein you might have had a bad experience, but yeah. how to fix that bad experience is also very critical. Yeah. 
So like exactly. a five pointer review out of five reviews that you have on your website is does not look that genuine versus me as a consumer goes on your website see let's say 1000 reviews and it even if it is a 4.2 star or 4.3 star i believe it more right because sure, i yep. that there will be some some things as an as a service or a product which you might not have met your customer expectations with at some point yep. in time but how you yeah. go back fix it for me for example a review saying the product was awesome versus i received the packaging was so and it was not proper and they yeah. did the they returned the product in a very swift way they replaced it with a new one and along with it apologizing for the kind of service i had earlier yeah making up for the for the hiccups which they might have had so that gives you that experience that even if something goes wrong this particular brand is there to protect me yep that goes a lot that goes a long way in terms of saying how that particular brand values their customers so for that a lot of credit goes to you uh, Nate in terms of diving that deep into customers business to be able to have that kind of influence to make yeah. changes because this is changes which happens at the root level so credit for that and your team right yeah thank you it's all about storytelling when we talk about branding and positioning can you help us or our audiences understand the importance of storytelling and how do you create a compelling storytelling for for any brand that gets associated with you yeah so we like to again to tie back into how we start at the brand foundational level every brand has a story of the founder why they created it what yeah. led them to take that plunge to go start their own business what likely they either wanted to create something better or they saw something there was a need so we like to obviously tie into that and the bet a lot of times we'll see that we have a client right now i know that we're working with another a, a different industry but similar in that they've been around for almost 100 years and they have a lot of they have a really great story of quality and value and just how great their products are but that wasn't really a part of their messaging and we're looking at okay how do we get back to telling the original brand story that ties into why the brand was created how it has this long history of high quality really great customers really great customer service and so we like to tie back into similar with the brand foundation why did you start what was your purpose and then in terms of tangibly how we help to tell that obviously video does a better job than anything else to really help communicate that certainly there's going to be written components to it as well but um we like to really incorporate as much video as we can into uh, showing that and then showing really the results from a client or customer standpoint um to get testimonials or reviews to be able to have people speak to here was the experience that i had and really sharing that overarching story that that in a way is really inviting the customer into that brand story and then vice versa the company is able to enter into the customer story if you will and you can kind of almost get into I'm sure you're familiar with the story brand framework that's a popular one you can enter in bring the enter into the customer's world making them the heroes because there is a balance i see where sometimes you can get too overly focused on just sharing your company story and it's and sharing about us and our story and journey or sometimes the customer or a new potential client might say you know that's great i just want to know can you do this or how good are your services and so i think there's obviously value and you want that to be the overarching theme and underlining underlying message that comes across but in a way that's going to invite the customer into that addresses their pain points addresses how it makes their life better addresses how it gets to the deeper why of why are they purchasing this product or why are they purchasing this service beyond it being just a basic needs a lot of similar elements from looking at it at the customer standpoint and the company standpoint as well of getting behind what's the why of it all absolutely absolutely now now i'm going to put you in a spot let's say you get on board a client which unfortunately does not really have a perfect brand image in mm -hmm. the market or in its customer segment or target audience for that matter how do you handle such a branding crisis for for a new client yeah. yeah so we've definitely dealt with that before where there's maybe a company that 
they don't have the best brand image and yeah. they might, one, they might not even fully be willing to admit that. So there's been some where yeah. they're focused on, we just need to get sales, but right. we're trying to communicate that the sales aren't going to come if they go and Google you and see a two-star review right. or your average rating is two out of five stars and there's been lots of reviews. So trying to communicate that we can't get too far ahead of ourselves with trying to just put a bandaid on it when there's really foundational issues here that employees are unhappy, there's bad customer reviews. And so, yes, we could go run a bunch of ads to get some new leads coming in, but is that only going to lead to even more negative reviews? What we like to do is, A, if the client is aware of it, they, they know that it's not representative of what they want the company to be, and they're willing to fix that, kind of own up to it. Then we will do any sort of rebrand that's necessary in the sense of um, on a design level, if it's maybe just something that's outdated or that's from visually, we'll clean that up. But ultimately we like to tie it back into, again, what's the original kind of brand purpose and the brand foundation that we're trying to function off of. And then we like to really go back and see, okay, what do we need to clean up within the company to help provide a better experience across the board? And then is there something that we might even need to do from like a PR level that's owning up to some of this? I know that we had, for example, years ago, there was a client that put on a big event. It was a big festival they did. And it ended up being terrible weather that day. It was an outdoor festival. The location was in the middle of nowhere. So there was buses that tracked in people. And it ended up just being a huge nightmare because of the weather, cars yeah. getting stuck in the mud. And there was tons of just really bad PR online. It was quite literally a crisis for them. And I know initially the, the tension for the client was, it wasn't our fault. It was the weather and we could only do this much. And yeah. and there was a wall coming up that they wanted to be defensive about it, but we were able to talk them through, look, Hey, this is the opportunity to acknowledge that yes, the weather played this big part, but we apologize for any oversights that we saw on the planning side or on this or that. We're going to give a refund to the people that weren't able to make it or the people that came in out of that experience, because ultimately that's going to give a much better impression to the public about, as you mentioned earlier, of when something does go wrong, what are you doing to fix that? Yeah. And so I think being willing to be, being, be humble, if you will, in that sense, and to acknowledge, Hey, you know, we want to do better. We want to do what we can to fix this. And that's what they did. And it worked out great. People were grateful. They were thankful. The event continued on the following years and it's been good ever since. And I think, yeah, it's a willingness to be able to acknowledge and just, it's okay. Nobody is perfect. No business is perfect. So yeah. like you said, when you do make a mistake, like how do you, how do you respond to that? And I think a big part of it as well is that a lot of companies will try and fully separate that this is a company not a person, but tying into the personality side of it, it's people want to engage with companies in a way that they would engage with a person or a friend. And so right. nobody would like a friend that's dishonest or not willing to own up or apologize in the same way that they don't want a company to be that way. So yeah, there's a lot of, sometimes there's a lot of soul searching or looking in the mirror, but it's definitely possible to be able to come back stronger from a crisis and, and really take advantage of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And before we let you go, Nate, to all the small business owners who are listening to our podcast or probably agency folks who focus on branding for small businesses, what advice would you give to them, you know, small business owners or agencies who are building a brand for small sure. business, looking to you know, build a strong man brand in a limited budget? Yeah, I would definitely say that if you're starting out smaller business, you don't have a big budget. There's a lot you can do just based on your own personal brand and really the rep, the reputation you're able to build from that. So I would really make it a priority to all the clients or customers you do have, even if it's a very small amount, really focus on making that the best experience possible for them. Because I know we've even experienced this here at our agency where we've not done a ton of outreach marketing sales on our own over the years. And we've been fortunate in that we've had really like almost all of our growth has been through referrals. And so I think that's because though we've put the time and effort into when someone does work with us, our work, our experience, the relationship we build, they're going to be willing to go refer us. And so 
None of that requires a budget. That just requires being willing to care, truly have the client's best interests in mind. And then there's obviously on the marketing piece, there are, there's a lot you can do on your own today. Obviously everybody's got a phone that has a camera that's got better quality than anything two, three, even 10 years ago. So there's a lot you can do just creating your own content, doing what you can. But I think ultimately the biggest thing I would recommend is really trying to create that. What's that experience we can provide to where somebody is going to want to go share that with others or refer others because people will do that when they have a good experience. And we've also seen where there's been times that clients have come to us and they came from a massive agency out of LA or Chicago, but <laughs> they didn't feel like they cared about them at all. They yeah. couldn't get in touch with them. They had a bad experience. Right. And so we might not have the firepower kind of staff wise that they do, but we're able to provide a much more personalized experience for them. And they're willing to stick around longer for that because they feel valued, appreciated. And obviously the work needs to show the results still too. But I think that, yeah, that there's a lot there that the old saying that word of mouth is the best form of advertising. And I, I think that, that. Yeah. yeah, I think that sometimes people forget that because there's so sure. many tactics today with digital marketing, you can do so much yeah. that you almost forget the basics of, Hey, if our word of mouth referrals aren't even happening because people aren't happy, then, you know, that's probably something we should take a look at. Absolutely. I always say this to my clients, it's free marketing. While exactly, we yep. marketers, we pitch a lot of brand marketing strategy. We prepare these decks, sit down with yeah. you, but all it starts from the fact is that if you are good at what you do, you're going to land yep. up with more business because yep. I get a good service. I'm going to sit with five people and talk to those five people about this good service that I receive. And this is no budget on your uh, sheets, yeah. right? This is free marketing that I am doing as your client on behalf of yep. you. It's very strong marketing, right? So, oh, yeah. so all that it takes is for you to be good at what you are doing. And then you pile up or multiply on that with your brand marketing yeah. campaigns. And that is where we all come in, right? Yeah, absolutely. Great. Nate, it was lovely speaking with you. I'm sure our audiences would have benefited a lot out of you. And we'll try and get hold of you for another detailed episode. Since uh, the prime crunch, we had to wrap it up. But we would love to get you for another detailed episode. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much for taking out time yeah. for the podcast. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Had a lot of fun and I look forward to being back on again sometime soon.